Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and we've waited about a year for this, but it is finally here. Godot 3.1 was just released today. Now, I'm going to do a quick introduction of what 3.1 is all about. I'm not going to jump into a huge amount of details on the features other than a couple of my favorites. So what I'm going to do instead is leave it to you guys. If there are certain features you want me to jump into in more depth that were added in this release, let me know and I will cover them in subsequent videos. My entire idea here is to be timely as opposed to in depth. So we're going to look at Godot new features kind of as you show interest in them. Uh, however, I have done some videos on these in the past. In fact, it feels like just, I don't know, last week, uh, I mentioned the uh, release candidate of Godot being available. Uh, yep. Okay, well that was a quick process. So basically they went from release candidate one, two, and three to final release in just under a week's time. So we are here. And this release is a big deal for a lot of reasons. Now, first off, with the port to Godot 3.0, one of the big things behind it was an attempt to um, move to a new renderer and that left some people behind. Unfortunately, what it turned out to is they moved to OpenGL 3.0 and drivers weren't always there. Mobile support wasn't always there. There were just basically problem. So one of the biggest features of OpenGL, uh, sorry, of uh, Godot 3.1 is the OpenGL ES 2.0 renderer is back. Now there are some issues with that as we will see in a moment, but basically you now have a choice of two renderers, OpenGL uh, 2 and OpenGL 3. Now when you fire up Godot, which coincidentally is now available, you head on over to Godot or GodotEngine.org. The standard download, if you click the download link, is now the 3.1 version. So it's no longer a specialty download. Just go ahead and grab it, extract the archive, and you are good to go. And once you fire up Godot 3.0, you will now see in the top right corner there is a toggle between GLES 2 and GLES 3. So if you're experiencing some performance problems with your game, uh, you may find the GLES 2 actually runs better. Now keep in mind, these are two separate rendering paths. You can basically think of them as two different engines, uh, but they use the same process across the board, but completely different graphics rendering. So there are a couple of features we will see shortly that GLES 2 cannot handle. But while we're in here, let's look at some of the other major new features. Let's grab something on screen here and you will see the overall inspector window has been greatly updated. A lot of the UIs and controls have been completely refined. You now have more consistent sliders, more consistent UI approach. Things are just nicer and cleaner. You're going to find a lot of small usability improvements in this particular release. Uh, definitely quality of life things. Same way as the file system uh, viewport here, this window was rewritten and redone. And a number of the editors were just incrementally improved. So the uh, 2D animation, the tile map editor, all of those have seen a facelift. Again, if you want to see more detail on those, do let me know. However, if you head on back to the release candidate announcement I did, I actually have, as these features were being developed, done videos on them. So I've done a video on GD script, animation improvements, 2D and 3D, UI improvements, skeletal deformation improvements, visual shader editor, and uh, constructive solid geometry support. So all of those things I have done some videos on. If you want, check those out. Out. And if you need to see something new or more in depth, again, do let me know comments down below and I will make sure to cover it. Now, heading back over here to Godot. Now, one of the biggest things that I love in this particular release, and this is 100% optional, so you do not have to go down this road if you do not want to, but you now have uh, optional scripting. So what this basically is, is I can give a type to a script. So I see here in this one, I have a var of type speed equal to 100. And I can do stuff with that, like speed equals horse. And that may not be ideal because we want speed to be equal to 100 or 101, 105. And this allows you to introduce bugs because what happens when you try to add plus one to horse? Well, kind of implementation dependent. You don't get two horses, by the way. You generally get a bug in your code. And this is where typing can come in very handy. So what I can do here is I can actually add a colon at the end and give it an implicit type. So now it knows that speed is an int and look what happened. Boom, we get an error here basically saying, wait a minute, that's not an int, that's a horse. And we don't want that. So this is, uh, again, it's optional typing. It's completely optional for you to put it in there. And for right now, it is just for picking up errors like what you just saw happen there. And it can also give you better typing, uh, better IntelliSense in the editor. And hopefully in the future, these, these types can also be used to help do performance optimizations. It's not there yet, but this is probably, it's a smallish looking thing, but it is probably the most important in my opinion, simply due to the fact that um, 
in duck typed or inferred typed languages, there are a lot of little insidious bugs that you can sneak in there from this kind of stuff that typing can easily catch. So again, it is a completely optional feature. If you want to keep GDScript exactly as it is today, you can do so. Okay, so that we covered off the two biggest guys right off the hop. So the EG, ELES2, OpenGL ES2 renderer is in there and optional typing is in there. We've got a revamped inspector. We already looked at that a little bit. The 2D editor has been updated. The tile set editor has been replaced. Uh, revamped file system docking on the one side. Kinematic body 2D improvements. Um, they also replaced the physics engine with bullet in 3.0. And then we've got some incremental physics improvements there as well. Uh, revamped animation editor, revamped animation tree. Again, I cover both of those in this animation improvements video. Uh, some very cool new features in there for animation support. Uh, new axis handling system, visual shader editor, uh, 2D skeleton, 2D mesh, improved 3D editor, 3D soft body support, ragdoll and skeletal IK or inverse kinematics, CSG or constructive solid geometry. Once again, I've done a video on these topics. Uh, improved C sharp support. C sharp isn't quite 100% there yet, but it is a heck of a lot better. And I think it's working on Android right now, but I don't want to be quoted there. Uh, networking support improvements, uh, custom class registration, media and microphone input. Uh, more VCS friendliness and many more changes. So we're going to get back to that OpenGL ES2 renderer change. So as I mentioned earlier on, with the port to Godot 3.0, the renderer was switched from GL ES2 to ES3, and that proved problematic for some people. So basically, there are a lot of people out there that are actually stuck on Godot 2.x right now because of these performance issues that cropped up. Uh, if you've got older hardware or shoddy uh, OpenGL driver support or so on, uh, you kind of got stuck with the old version of uh, Godot with all the improvements kind of being lost to you. Well, the nice thing with the ES2 renderer, those people should now be caught up. Now, as I mentioned a couple times already, there are a couple of gotchas. Um, so here are the features and uh, features and limitations of the ES2 renderer. Um, so the 2D, it is completely feature complete. So if you're using it for 2D, uh, your code should work fine no matter which renderer you use. But in 3D, rendering is done entirely on RGB color space. GLES uses linear color space. Uh, it's much more efficient and compatible, but also means that HDR will not be supported. Lighting looks a bit different too. So you're gonna get different lighting and you will not get HDR. Uh, some advanced PBR or physically based rendering features are not supported, such as subsurface surface scattering. Uh, unsupported features will not be visible when editing materials. Some shader features will not work and will throw an error when used, uh, basically because they're not available in OpenGL ES2, which makes sense. Some post-processing effects are not present either. Unsupported features will not be visible in editing environments. As the backend is intended to run on the lowest end hardware possible, shaders need to be kept very small. As such, all lighting is done by using a forward, forward multi-pass approach. GI probes, of course, do not work. Use baked light maps instead. And GPU-based particles will not work. So those are the two key dif or those are the key differences between GL ES2 and Three. Now, the nice thing is it's mostly hiding the implementation details from you. So if you choose ES2, a lot of the features that will break it just won't be available to you. Uh, optional typing in GD script. Uh, we already covered that one off. The revamped inspector we covered off. Here is the updated revamped 2D editor. Uh, so you won't accidentally scale your physics objects anymore. Uh, we've got a new tile set editor in place. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, Workflow is a major pain. Wrote a whole new tile set editor with many features familiar from other tile set creation software and much better support for auto tile feature added in 3.0. Uh, this one I think I will do a video on because it's a substantial enough change. Let me know again if you're interested in that down below. Uh, the refamped file system doc. Uh, now supports a single tree plus files view by default with thumbnails for files. Makes it easy to navigate projects. The kinematic body, 2D and 3D improvements in place. The revamped animation editor. Again, I have an in-depth video on this. There's some really cool things you can do, like have there's previews of the animations in place for frames. You can do audio in sync. It shows you the actual waveform of the audio being used. Again, I did do all of that and this in uh, subsequent videos that I've linked earlier. Um, New access handling system, visual shader editor is back. Now this was available in two um, and it didn't make it into 3.0, but it is back in uh, 3.1. I hope to actually go hands on with this, but it's a way of visually making uh, shaders as opposed to using code. Uh, 2D skeletal support, again, I did a video of this as well. Uh, 2D meshes, improved 3D editor, uh, 3D soft body support. Again, a lot of this comes from having uh, the bullet physics engine on the back end. Definitely nice improvements to see there. Ragdoll is a skeletal IK. Constructive solid geometry. This is actually very cool. I did an in-depth video on that, but basically it's kind of like 
booleans on crack. So you can build dynamic volumes by taking one surface and adding to or subtracting it from another surface. Opens up a whole bunch of options. Actually, ironically, CSG used to be the way that things like Unreal Engine and Quake and so on actually built most of their levels. So it's kind of like what's old is new again. Uh, GPU-based particle systems, greatly improved C-sharp support. So as you can see here, projects can be exported to Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Support for Android, iOS, and HTML5. Darn, I thought Android was there. It said Android is the current priority, but it's not quite there yet. Unfortunately, until those platforms come for C-sharp, it's hard to consider C-sharp a full-blown feature. But we are getting closer and closer and closer there. There's also uh, less um, dependencies now. You basically just have MS build as a requirement. Uh, network improvement support, custom class registration, media and microphone input and we covered almost all this already so that is the big deal so we've got here about compatibility with 3.0 Godot 3.1 strives to maintain compatibility with Godot 3.0 so your project should be easy to port over to the new version there have been some compatibility changes and if you want more details you head on over to the change log and the change log is big um I will link this. We're not going through it. Uh, but if you run into any problems with your actual port, especially check out the change section because uh, that's where you're going to find the, the breaking changes that may have uh, borked your code. So as you can see, there have been a lot of updates and improvements in Godot 3.1, but we covered off most of them. And it's I'm pretty stoked about this release overall, to be honest. It's, it's definitely a nice one. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. What are you most excited about in Godot 3.1? Were you held off from being able to jump to Godot 3 because of the OpenGL ES3 renderer? And if so, have you tried porting your code forward and have you had success? Let me know what feature you are most interested in me doing additional coverage of. Uh, right now, I think tiled maps is probably the top of my list just because I've covered all the other stuff in so much detail already. And again, those most of those videos that I have done on all the features we've seen already are still relevant. They were during the development version, but they should still be in date. But if there is something specifically you want to see me cover, let me me know comments down below and I will do my best also I am updating my book which is still in development uh, all of the 2d stuff is done 3d stuff is started uh, porting in uh, updating for 3.1 and uh, hopefully that should be up for patrons in a little bit after my vacation in a week or two. Uh, hopefully we'll start seeing that come on live fast and I'll have that up for uh, early access on Gumroad or somewhere similar uh, very, very soon, I hope. So uh, let me know also if you have a, a preference for like work in progress books, where you would like to be because I can't publish it up until... Um, like I want to be able to give you uh, unlimited updates as I create new versions of it. So the Amazon version obviously is the final version. So I think in Gumroad in the meantime, but if you have experience with a publishing place that you would recommend, let me know that in the comments down below as well. All right, Godot 3.1 is here. Have a great day. Bye.